Good morning, John Morgan here. I'm over at Wyanga Falls, the beautiful waterfall uh, in outback of Australia, Litchfield National Park. And yesterday I went for a nice hike all the way over the ridge and then back down the other side. Um, and I went for a swim in this water and I got to do one of the things I'd always wanted to do which was put my mouth under a waterfall and drink it, it was, and it tasted, it was, it was awesome, it was clean, it was beautiful, it was, wasn't that cold but, uh, and, and get to swim in it, swim in water that's that clean, I've always wanted to do that. Unfortunately a lot of places you go to now you can't do that and so it was wonderful. Um, and it helped to feed this metaphor, this myth that I have, that I play with, that I pretend, uh, which is a big part of creating health in my life, physical health, um, and that is that I'm a caveman. Also, I go around barefoot most of the time, especially in warm weather. See, I'm barefoot right now. Why? Well, there's a number of reasons, uh, which I can go into uh, at another point maybe, but basically overall, I feel healthier when my feet are connected to the earth naturally, when I can feel the earth beneath my feet. I like the idea of my feet having to become strong and sensitive to the earth instead of being encased inside a shoe. Um, I like running barefoot. I like the idea that it's, uh, it takes, takes more grit to feel the hardness, the reality of the earth beneath my feet. I like the, the challenge of walking on gravel because it's uncomfortable. A lot of stuff, right? I'm not, I'll, I can talk for hours about that. But the point I want to mention it today is the same point as why I want to say I love putting my mouth under the waterfall, which is this idea that uh, I'm a caveman. Okay, it's not true. It's a, it's a myth. It's a metaphor, right? But why do I choose to believe that? Uh, because it makes it easier for me to live in a more natural way and living in a natural way is one of the things that I want to do for my own physical personal health uh, and so walking barefoot walking around without a shirt on as much as I can putting my mouth under a waterfall doing things that feel caveman-esque is uh, helps to keep this metaphor and this myth alive and so really I wanted to talk about the idea of using myths as a positive thing having myths for your life what's your story for your life not your story for your life that's objectively true, but your fictional story for your life that actually supports you in doing something that, you know, that, that, is, that is something that you want to do. If you want to eat in a healthy way. For me, exercise. I have a, a thing that I've been doing recently called Earn Your Protein. So a caveman wouldn't just eat a piece of meat just because it bought it at the grocery store. A caveman would, would actually do something quite extraneous and probably tire his muscles out before he eats protein. So on days where I'm going to eat protein, if I'm having meat, then I have to work out today. That's just how, that's, a, that's how it goes. And on days that I don't work out, then I don't get to eat protein. That's a vegetarian day. That's a gatherer day, not a hunter day. And so, what, and so that's, what, that's part of my caveman myth story, right? But why do I have that? Because I want to eat meat but I don't want to eat meat all the time. I also want to be vegetarian sometimes. Uh, how do I have both? I mix them days, different days. And well, how do I encourage myself to work out? Well, if I really want meat, then get your ass to the gym or get your ass to CrossFit or whatever and, and do a workout or do, a, you know, do 150 pull-ups or sit-ups or whatever. And so these things work together, but they're carried by the myth. The myth of, I'm a caveman, that's what a caveman does. And it's silly. it sounds silly, it sounds stupid for an adult to be pretending that he's a caveman to the point where he doesn't shave. He does all these little silly things to, to, to make that belief more true. Why would you live in, why would you act like such a child? Because children are geniuses. Myth is wisdom. You know, Joseph Campbell talked about the religion is the mis is misunderstood mythology. Religion destroyed myth. People used to be able to hold two planes of reality in place at the same time, the mythic plane and the reality plane, right? And, and both had value, but one's plane, the myth plane carried you into a way of behaving and acting that supported you in the reality plane, that actually helped you in the reality plane. But we started to literalize myths. We started to say, oh, that has, it's not true. You're not really a caveman. It's modern times. If you were really a caveman, then you wouldn't even wear shorts. Well, yeah, okay, I'm not going to take the extreme and be an idiot, but, but let's play with it. Where's the, where's the middle way where myths can actually support us and carry us, you know? Um, and so for me, a myth is, is really simply, it's like a, a, a bunch of metaphors strung together. Now, people don't have problems with metaphor, you know? You don't say, like, sorry to rain on your parade. What are you talking about? It's not even raining. And where's the parade? I don't have a parade. People don't do that, right? People don't say, dude, stop using a metaphor. Met metaphors aren't real. No, of course not. We get that the metaphor is just a representation and we use metaphors when we speak and we, and we think about them and we use them and we teach 
because to hear the metaphor gives you an understanding at a deeper level. It carries a deeper understanding. It brings spirit and energy in, in, within, uh, up within you, right? Uh, and so why not string a whole bunch of them together in a narrative and call it a myth and use them in that way? It's like almost as soon as, soon as we string them together and use them uh, with a narrative, people start going, oh, that's just a myth. Don't be just in myths. No, we don't, oh, that's just a metaphor. No, we love and honor metaphors because they help us to engage and connect with the world more powerfully and more effectively. And all I'm saying is let's make it longer. Let's put a bunch together. Let's say I'm a caveman and let's say I'm this. Let's create an identity around it, a mythical identity, a character. And let's believe in it to the point where it's silly and it's like, you know, my wife laughs at me. Uh, people like people make fun of me. They tease me for it. Like, oh, John thinks he's a caveman or something like that. Oh, that's not, that's not caveman, John. A caveman wouldn't do that. I posted a little picture. Uh, I ate a quiche on the plane. I said, how to eat a how to eat a quiche like a caveman, a caveman. And I just ate all the egg out of the inside because I'm trying to eat the bits of a quiche that are more naturally occurring, egg, vegetables, as opposed to the shell, which is a bunch of grains, which were created through the process of agriculture and industry, and are actually naturally occurring, and a caveman would eat that, typically. Uh, okay, caveman wouldn't eat quiche, but I'm playing with the idea because uh, there's certain parts of the food that want to eat, so how to eat a quiche like a caveman? Oh, but a caveman wouldn't use a plastic fork. Yeah, dude, all right. I'm on a plane, I'm not gonna dive my face into the quiche. There's a middle way, right? Let the myth, the story, the metaphor empower you to live in particular ways that you wanna be living, that the, the average, because there's a story that you're living anyway, right? There's the modern story of modern man, of modern woman, and a certain way that they live and the way that you should live. You know, when you eat a quiche, you should eat the whole quiche or whatever. Whatever the modern story is, you're unconsciously living it. And so have uh, another story, have a myth that can compete with that modern story that you're unconsciously living anyway, and have it empower you to do the things that you really wanna do. Whatever the things you wanna be doing are, create a myth around that become that person, create an I am statement of that character and live it as if it's true. Do what you did when you were a little kid where you said, I am superhero, I'm Superman, or I am a dentist or whatever, I'm a doctor. And, and you just pretended you were that and you acted in that way and you behaved in that way and you responded to questions in that way and you wore the same kind of clothes and you brought it to life and you embodied it. And then <clears throat> all the things that that person or character would have done would be easier for you to do. And you didn't have to try to get the willpower to do it or do it in, in, in defiance of some other uh, forces or something within you. You just were that person, you did those things. So for me, again, the caveman thing's about not, uh, eating certain ways, about exercising certain ways, about experiencing the world in certain ways, um, and doing little things like tasting a beautiful waterfall, walking and hiking totally barefoot, walking around without a shirt on. Pardon me for, again, I've had people complain about that in my videos. That's not professional, not wearing a shirt. Shut up. You know, I'm a caveman, that's what I do. I'm a caveman on YouTube, whatever. Um, it, it helps to empower me in the things that are important to me. So that's my myth. That's one of my myths and metaphors. But one of my metaphorical narrative strings, right? That's one of my myths that I live. And so, whatever it is that you want to be doing in your life right now, more of, whatever it is, business, health, relationship, what's the myth that you're going to create? What's the myth that you're going to create? What's your story? Who are you going to be? Much love.